Our next question is from Riley in St. Louis. Hi, Ryan and Josh. My name is Riley Brown. I am 20 years old and I live in St. Louis, Missouri. Congratulations on your 100th episode and I hope you come visit my town again soon. My question for you is, how can I better shine light on my essentialist lifestyle? As I'm getting older, my family is growing more and more non-supportive of the changes I choose to make with who I am. Everything from items that are removed from my life to high will reactive situations to constantly refuting my mission in life. I feel like they undermine and deny who I am because they want me to become as they are now. How can I help them see that I am my own person pursuing my own path and only wish to be accepted? Thank you very much. Have a great day, guys. So, Ryan, I was, I was reminded of two essays that are on our website that, well, we wrote one of them together, and then I wrote this one recently about unsolicited discharge. Now, I'm not sure if this is exactly what Riley is getting. I sort of wrote this about criticism, but she's certainly getting some criticism. Before I, I read a little bit of this, though, she said something that was fascinating to me. She said, how do I shine a light on my minimalist lifestyle? And I think something's important to, to realize there. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, There's this light above us, right? It's like a, yes. a spotlight almost, mm -hmm. right? Now, there's a thing, there's a good and bad side of shining a light on something. <laughs> because uh, you can see my dry skin in the uh, corner of my <laughs> temples here. and <laughs> It brings out all the flaws, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you have that scar on your forehead, and I can definitely see that scar on your forehead right now. <laughs> now, I think it makes you more beautiful. Thank you. Now, but They call me Frankenstein in grade school. <laughs> Seriously, they did. <laughs> So, uh, so one thing to think about here, if you're trying to shine the light, just keep in mind that you're also going to illuminate the flaws. Now, the good thing is you'll actually see what to improve as well. And by shining the light, so you and I, we have written a lot about our own lives. We've talked about our own lives a lot. We've done videos and a documentary about our own lives. Uh, our lives are out there. We've shined the light on our lives. Yeah. And it's helped me really understand and come to terms, but also it's really difficult. That last little segment, that podcast Sean's tearing up in the corner over there where you were talking about your relationship with your father. And I think it's going to help a lot of people, but shining a light on that is also really difficult and it's hard to talk about. Mm. And quite often we don't want to confront these issues for real. We, mm. we think we do, mm. but realize that if you're going into battle with some of these issues, it's actually going to be a battle. Now, in, in terms of, of dealing with their um, undermining and they're not being supportive and you want to help them understand, um, I thought about this essay, Unsolicited Discharge. I'll put a link to it in the show notes, but it just goes a little something like this. It's really short. Last week, Ryan and I filmed a living room conversation on our YouTube channel about dealing with criticism. While I agree with everything we said, I'd like to add a few words. There is a significant difference between feedback and criticism. We must seek feedback from trusted people because it makes our work and our life better, right? Yeah. Feedback. In fact, um, uh, yesterday we were in the process of, of hiring a, a filmmaker for The Minimalists. And mm -hmm. what, what we did is we, we got in a room. We, we got with the 19 different finalists. We were watching their, their, their videos, their submissions, their reels. But then we, we narrowed it down to a top seven, and we sent the top seven to uh, our trusted friends. We wanted feedback from people like Matt, and, and I sent it to Bex, and, and um, Jeff Dave, and Dave. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. And so we got, and, and Jess, Jessica provided feedback. Yeah. And, and so we got feedback from all of these these different people because feedback helps us understand what we're missing gives us a clean pair of eyes and, and it's important it's not always they're not going to agree with us but that's a good thing yeah. right yeah man it well criticism is so important man it's so important well, well, to, feed, to here's the thing i say feedback's important that's, i like to I, I i know it sounds like semantics but i mm -hmm. like to differentiate for me feedback provides the problem with the solution mm -hmm. most criticism when i think about like just visceral criticism mm -hmm. it just highlights the problem and they're like uh um oh, look at that scar on his forehead you know right. it's a youtube comment or well whatever. see well see that's where i differentiate that's not that's not criticism uh -huh. that is discharge exactly so so for me when i say criticism is important i think criticism can be part of feedback uh i don't think they're you know uh interchangeable words but i think criticism is is a piece of that um i think criticism is important because none of us are perfect yeah and any of us who walk around and think that we have it figured out 100%, well, then that, that person's an idiot. Yeah. 
and uh, for me to not take, for me to not look at criticism, even going back to the, the, the relationship with my dad, the criticism he would give me, I would, uh, you know, tr- try to uh, subjectively look at as best as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I can look at some of this criticism and, and it does one or two things for me. It either makes me say, oh, you know what? They have a point. I should X, Y, and Z. Or it makes me look at myself and say, oh, you know what? No, I'm really, really secure with who I am and the way that I'm living my life. And I don't uh, agree where uh, where their perspective is coming from with that criticism. Right. So it, it strengthens. who It either helps me be a better person right. or it will strengthen who, who I already am with, with criticism. Yeah. When it comes to discharge, when it comes to unsolicited discharge, yes. that stuff I can easily look at and and uh just kind of compartmentalize it and be like oh like that person is a troll well, it, especially it, anything online because like people they behave totally different online yes they are different people th- online than they are in real life and the same so, is true with text so f- messages yeah and absolutely the, the, the different the different formats that, yeah. that we go through so so when you talk about uh the, this discharge the thing that i think about is you say it's easier for you to car- compartmentalize it mm-hmm. i think for most people and for us until we, we you and i've been criticized so frequently so much it's like up up to and including death threats it hurt yeah it hurt up until about midway through 2014 i finally started to like just be able to compartmentalize it but continue. Well, and, and that's because i think we developed some some calluses along the way yeah um but but when i talk about seeking feedback from trusted people and then avoiding criticism from naysayers uh because it it really i think it clutters our lives if we're just getting the that discharge right yeah and so so here's the thing i said in the essay whenever you create something meaningful you will be critiqued. And I would say oh, yeah. to Riley, whenever you do something meaningful, if you're simplifying your life and you find meaning in that, if you're getting rid of debt, if, if you're trying to make some sort of change, mm-hmm. you are going to be critiqued. There's no doubt about well, whenever it. Whenever you stand for something and people in your life are not standing for the same thing, they want to point out how you're really not standing for that. I'm not standing for that. And yeah. you're really not standing for it either, and yeah. here's why. You're not a real minimalist. You own underwear, whatever, right? Whatever, yeah. In fact, I've got some uh, examples here. That I, I pulled these from our YouTube comments recently. And so I, what I said is no matter how close to perfect your creation is or no matter how close to perfect your life is, right, mm-hmm. no matter how close to perfect it is, you will be judged. And so here are some, some recent comments, I not, and I'll tell you what I did with them in a second. The lighting in your, on your podcast looks creepy. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this video is stupid. And they spelled stupid. S-T-O-O-P-I-D. Yeah. That's so funny. Dude. And someone actually uh, um, commented, don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a day job. <laughs> and so, but, see, um, but you know what though? If we met those three people in person, they wouldn't dare say that to our face. Right, I I, I agree with that. And, and and that's that to me. That's how I can compartmentalize it. It's because, well, just with the example, of the person who spelled stupid S T O O P I D, they obviously don't even take their own comment seriously. Exactly. But but here's the thing. I, I and I think that translates to Riley's question here. I think when we get so comfortable with someone, sometimes we accidentally say some of these things that are hurtful and we don't realize that they're hurtful. They're just flippant. These are really flippant comments. Yeah. And we're really close to someone like parents or close yeah. family members. Sometimes we accidentally say things. That's the exception. Your family, they will say that stuff to you. And, right. And to your face. Yeah. Which, and, yeah, which it does hurt. And so that's why I, this, this, this stood out with me and Riley. So here, here's what I'll say to Riley from the essay. Most criticism is merely an unsolicited discharge of personal preference. Mm. And because you didn't ask for it, you aren't required to respond. Yeah. I didn't respond to these people. No, this video isn't stupid. But no, the lighting, see what we're trying to do. No, yeah. I don't care. Right. I don't have a day job. Should I get one? Yeah, right. <laughs> what day job do you recommend I get? <laughs> um, and and so, so, so you aren't required to respond. In fact, it's best not to clap back. Instead, click delete or mute or block and move on to the next creation. So that's exactly what I did with, with these. I, I block these people. I'll never see their comments ever again. Right. And here's the thing. I think you 
may not be able to block them, but you can delete or mute. And sometimes that requires uh, the leverage you have with your parents, with your family members, is creating some distance from them. Mm -hmm. If they're behaving in a way that is unsupportive, then you don't have to accept that. You can walk away. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean you go to the extreme right away of, well, I've had a funeral for, oh, you said one bad thing about me? This relationship's dead. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about, oh, okay, uh, pointing it out. Hey, you know, what you just said right there, I, I feel like that's really not supportive. Yeah. And I'd appreciate if you would support me because I care about you and I think you care about me. Just to go back to your point of, because, yeah, you're not going to end a relationship over one criticism or one negative interaction and there really isn't a number of how many interactions you have to have before you end a relationship. But it just made me think, um, the, the, when I know to end a relationship is when I feel tormented, mm. when I feel like I've done everything I can to save a relationship and I still feel tormented and I have been putting in that us box and I've been putting in that us box and, and, and the other person has not put anything in that us box. And if, if anything, they've been taking from it. Right. Like that is where I think is where you end the relationship. Riley, you are not at this point. You're 20 years old. Yeah. Uh, you are, you've got a, a, it's so funny, man, because when I was 20, I would say the same stuff like, man, I'm getting older. And like people just, you know, 37 year olds like me would laugh at, laugh at myself and be like, ha ha, you think you're getting older. You're 20 years old. But so, <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, I'm not undermining the fact that Riley is getting older, but Riley, you're super young. And I'll tell you, it took my mom about five years before she finally came around and, uh, she is so supportive now and, um, I never thought it was going to happen. Yeah. I, the hope was there, but the expectation of getting a hundred percent support from my mom, it, it was, it, it was not there. Now, luckily that relationship did come full circle. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I've told the story before I'll tell it again real quick, but like the, the moment I realized like, Oh my God, like my mom, she accepts me and she is supporting me. It's when she was visiting Mariah and I in Montana and it was the first time she had ever come out there. Mariah and I had just moved into a new place. I picked her up from the airport, bring her back to my house. She opens up her suitcase. And the first thing she pulls out is like this, um, like a vase and some candles and some other stuff. And she's like, hey, I got you a present. And like in my head, I'm like, all right, Ryan, don't be a jerk. Right. Don't, don't project my own insecurity about having things that I don't need. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't say anything. I just, you know, let her talk. And she was like, here are some things. Um, I love you. I'm proud of you. I am uh, really proud of, uh, uh, of, of of the relationship you've built with Mariah. This is a beautiful place. And I just wanted to show you my appreciation. If this doesn't fit in your life, then please go find a good home for it. Please give it away to someone that who is going to use it. And it was in that moment I was like, oh, my God. like Breakthrough. It, yeah, it took five years yes. to get that breakthrough. So, Riley, um, so that, on, the other, on, on the other side of the spectrum with my mom, I showed support. Went way out of my way to appreciate her to accept her, to love her, to respect her. I did everything I could and it paid off after five years. Hmm. So Riley, do the same thing with your parents. Yeah. Show them support, show them love, show them respect. Go out of your way to have these conversations with them about how you need respect. See, when, when, we, when, when any of us demand respect, we first must ask the question, have we shown respect? Right. And if, if that is not the case, then you must show respect before you gain respect. You can't demand respect. Cannot, That's not how respect works. It's and, just not how it works. And her question was, can you ha can, can, how can I help them understand that I want to be accepted? And that reminded me of this other essay that we wrote called Understanding Others. I'm certainly not going to read this whole thing because it's a long one, but we'll put a link to it in the show notes. But there's this acronym in there, T-A-R-A, -A, that you've heard us talk about before. And it's, it's really the path toward understanding other people. Yeah. And so all and respect's one of those, but Riley, if you want them to accept you, that is like that's after the first step. It's tolerance first. Mm. First you have to find a way that they can tolerate your lifestyle. So are they doing that? Are you tolerating them as well? And then it gets toward acceptance. And we, we talk about the steps on sort of getting past tolerance because it starts there. But tolerance is a really weak virtue. And if you just tolerate someone, imagine if you're you were living with Mariah. I mean, mm. you live with Mariah now, but <laughs> you all just tolerated each other. Oh, God. That would be a miserable existence. But it is necessary to have the tolerance first before you can get to the acceptance of, well, she's different. She has her own preferences, her own desires, her mm. own interests. And then beyond that, a huge leap to the third step is respect. T-A-R-A, yeah. Tara. You and, know, it's, well, go ahead. Well, and then the last one is 
appreciation. And yeah. that is the huge leap. Eventually, I think you can get to a point, Riley, where you appreciate them for who they are, mm -hmm. warts and all, realizing that their life is different from yours. Yeah. And that's okay. In fact, that's what makes life beautiful are all these differences because what what's the alternative? They were all exactly the same. Yeah. Well, then there's nothing to appreciate anyway. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, when it comes to that appreciation piece of it, man, it's not like, so with Mariah, as an example, like, yeah, she has more things than I, than I have. Um, I don't know the number of things. I just know that there are a lot of things around the house where I'm like, oh, like, that's not mine. That's Mariah's. And it's not that I appreciate the fact that she collects more things, mm -hmm. but what I do appreciate is the love, the kindness, the respect that Mariah shows this relationship. And I also appreciate everything she does for our relationship. I mean, the, the, the way that, um, she's just like your stereotypical loves to cook and, and loves to take care of the house and loves to like, just really, um, create a beautiful environment for us to live in. Mm -hmm. and she loves to take care of the relationship. Yes, and she does. And I appreciate that so much that for me to look at her stuff and say, you know what? I know that you got more stuff than me, but it's cool. I love you so much. And like everything you do for this relationship, I appreciate so much. Mm -hmm. if, if, it, if, it, if it helps her, if it shows her the appreciation by me letting go of my own insecurities and my own idiosyncrasies yeah. for her... Uh, for her, uh, her, I want to say her well-being, but it's more than her well-being, but her preferences. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Matt does this with, with Natalie, which, by the way, Matt just got engaged. Oh, my God. The yeah. Italian, the Congrats, Italian Matt. Stallion. That's right. But Man, he... Uh, uh, I mean, with Natalie, I mean, I know she's definitely not a minimalist. You did a video on your YouTube channel about living with your non-minimalist girlfriend. Your non-minimalist fiance. You have to, like, update the title, right? <laughs> you just yeah. go in and, like, do voiceovers, like, to uh, inject the word fiance. But, um, uh, I mean, sh she showed up to Dodgeball last week. I could tell she was probably wearing a brand new outfit that said USA because it was the 4th of July. No, it wasn't new. No, it wasn't. <laughs> she bought it on, like, 4th of July two years ago. She didn't get rid of it. I yeah, well, That's great. Uh, yeah, and I can tell, like, like Matt would never show up wearing the, the USA tank top or whatever. But like, it it's that appre and and the cool thing is, like, I actually saw you appreciated that. Like, you've got this little Australian woman who shows up at our dodgeball league, like being the most American Fourth of July person there, yeah. and uh, it was pretty great. So you're able to appreciate these idiosyncrasies in a way when you step back from yourself and realize, hey. Uh, I'm not solipsistic. I'm not the center of the universe. Right. I can appreciate these other things too, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I guess what I'm trying to get at too is like, again, it's not like I appreciate head on. I look at Mariah's collection of things, and I, head on, I go, you know what? I've learned to appreciate her collection of things. No. What What I have learned to do is by showing her that I accept, uh, I accept her idiosyncrasies. Mm -hmm. That is in turn showing her how much I appreciate the relationship. You you appreciate her as a whole, even if even if you don't like every single trinket. 